Hello again! Let's continue our beginner's series of tutorials on functional safety. In this video, you can learn in a short time what needs to be done in terms of functional safety at the beginning of the development or adaptation of an electronic product for vehicles. I'm Erwin Petri, expert for automotive functional safety at Google Mark. I hope my video helps you. No matter whether you are an employee of a car maker or a supplier, the mistake is often made of not properly classifying a risk posed to health or human life by the electric and or electronic feature in a vehicle, or of not having clearly defined the goals for functional safety. If you make this mistake, you lack the decisive basis for further technical development to achieve functional safety. That's why you need to begin early in the development process as required in ISO 26262. ISO 26262 refers to the early phase as the concept phase and mainly describes it in part three. The concept phase also includes an impact analysis, for which requirements are contained in part two. And for use in the development of motorcycles, part 12 has more specific information on risk assessment. In the concept phase, the following four topics have to be implemented. I will now explain them in more detail to you and I will work out the key lessons for you. At the beginning, item definition is about clearly defining and delimiting the subject of development. If a predecessor product exists, an impact analysis comes into play. Using a method that is specific for automotive, hazardous events are assessed and the necessary automotive safety integrity level, the ACIL, is determined and this defines how development should be performed. A functional safety concept specifies on a vehicle level how safety goals should be achieved by getting systems to interact. We start with topic number one, item definition. The term item denotes the subject of development, your product. These are one or more interacting electrical and or electronic systems that implement the desired function. Examples of items are automatic cruise control systems, airbags, or electrical components as simple as a car window mechanism, which, for example, can trap an arm or head. Developing the item means that different kinds of requirements and boundary conditions have to be put together, be they functional requirements, normative references, or the performance of the involved actuators in the vehicle. And it is also important that you agree on what lies outside the item, that is to know the boundary. So this gives us the first key lesson you should remember. The subject of development, the item, must be defined and the boundaries determined. Let's continue with the impact analysis. This is our second topic. An impact analysis shows how the life cycle should be adjusted, tailored, and which safety activities are necessary. It must be known whether the item is a new development a modification or just the use of a previously developed item in a modified environment. For example, an airbag in a new vehicle variant. Now, in the safety life cycle, this primarily refers to the car maker and the vehicle level, but all suppliers should carry out an impact analysis for their area of responsibility. This is key lesson number two. In order to be able to determine the necessary safety activities, an impact analysis must first be made. Our third topic is about understanding the risks posed by our product. The risk to human life, which is in our item, has to be estimated. Note that this is typically an activity to be performed by the car maker. 
Depending on this risk assessment, more and sometimes less must be done technically and in organizational terms. The hazard analysis and risk assessment begins with a description of operational situations and operating modes, for example, driving on a highway. The hazards that arise in the event of faults in our item are determined. For instance, a lane keeping assist system could accidentally steer the vehicle onto the other side of the road. The Automotive Safety Integrity Level, or ACIL, is then determined for the relevant hazardous events. This ACIL has a significant influence on the development activities and the product. To do this, you determine the severity of harm, the probability of exposure to the operational situation, and third, the controllability or ability to avoid harm. Once you've done that, you determine the ACIL using this table here. For example, faulty steering by the lane keeping assist system into the oncoming lane could be classified as ACIL D, as this can lead to a serious injury. In contrast, incorrectly displaying a recognized traffic sign is less critical because by itself a traffic sign recognition system does not interfere with vehicle operation and the driver generally reacts appropriately. Once you've carried out these assessments, you write down safety goals for further development. Safety goals are high-level safety requirements that are suitable for mitigating hazardous events. We have two key lessons here. One is that the item is subjected to a hazard analysis and risk assessment in order to scale the safety activities. The other one is that safety goals are formulated. The fourth topic in the concept phase is the functional safety concept. It is about deriving functional safety requirements from safety goals. This is where requirements for avoiding detecting and controlling faults are developed. A safe state is defined in to which the system changes in the event of an error or, if this is not immediately possible, a degraded functionality. And driver warnings are defined to be displayed in the event of an error. Requirements must be assigned so that they get either implemented in the system architecture or get implemented by external measures. The functional safety concept must be verified to determine whether it's suitable to adequately mitigate the hazards. Let me formulate two additional key lessons here. The functional safety requirements are assigned to systems for implementation and a functional safety concept describes, in a comprehensive way, how the hazards should be mitigated. So, that was a walk through the concept phase according to ISO 26262. And here is my summary of what I think you really should learn about this phase and take to heart. First. As for every development project, the subject of development, which we call the item here, must be defined and its boundaries determined. In all cases, where we are developing on the basis of some existing system in order to be able to determine the necessary safety activities, an impact analysis must be made. Third lesson. The item is subjected to a hazard analysis and risk assessment to scale the safety activities. A method specific to the automotive industry is used for this purpose, which is based on an assessment of the risk of relevant hazardous events. ACLD means the highest risk and therefore requires the most rigorous application of the requirements of ISO 26262. 
safety goals are formulated, which are detailed in the form of functional safety requirements, FSRs, on a vehicle level. Key lesson number five. The FSRs are, in turn, assigned to systems for implementation. And my last key lesson. A functional safety concept includes FSRs and describes in a comprehensive way how hazards should be mitigated. Okay, thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, leave a thumb up and subscribe to this channel. If you want additional information, you can watch these videos about functional safety. Bye-bye.